We're going to talk about misattunement versus attunement in relationships and in sex. So you're going to want to listen to this, particularly the part about sex, I think, because how many times have we had sex with someone where it was just like off? It felt misattuned. It felt like we weren't synced up. And in life, there's other examples where we are like strangers passing in the night or we're talking over each other, like on a Zoom call, for example, and it just feels bad. These are examples of misattunement. And I'm going to talk about why this matters in intimate relationships, as well as deep, close friendships, and of course, sexual relationships. So what is attunement? In my own words, it's the act of tuning in, tuning in to another person and ourselves at the same time. So self-attunement is like checking in with myself. Hmm, how do I feel right now? Do I feel exhausted, depressed, anxious, excited, turned on, turned off? What am I feeling right now? Can I tune in to my inner self and my experience in my body, my breath, my thoughts? Tuning in, right? And the trick for people is to tune in to another person at the same time that I'm tuning in to myself. And when there's a resonance between two people, that's attunement. And this is often talked about in developmental child psychology, where the parent is attuned or not to the child. And anyone who studies this stuff knows that a misattuned parent to the child and their needs and wants and desires and emotions will lead to insecure relationships an insecure relationship between parent and child. Like, for example, if a parent is staring at their phone all day, drinking alcohol, and trying to parent at the same time, that's going to be a very misattuned environment, right? That kid's going to get misattuned to all the time. And that kid's going to learn to self-regulate and learn that big people are not that reliable. And so I'm just going to auto-regulate over here. I'm just going to be by myself and figure my own shit out, which is really traumatic for kids. In adult mutual relationships where there's equal power, there still can be very misattuned relationships and attuned relationships. Of course, attuned relationships, tuned in relationships are going to have better chemistry, better flow, better sex, and more fulfillment and joy in the connection. Misattuned relationships are going to, chronic misattunement are going to be insecure relationships that never are fulfilling and always really... Um, heart. Can we be attuned all the time? No, that's not reality. The work is attune to your person or people or a group, tune in to the vibe, the energy, the connection. And then of course, you're going to get tired or you're going to look at your phone or you're going to do things where now you're a little misattuned. Big deal. And the work is, if there's a misattunement between you and a partner in a heated conversation, for example, obviously the, the work is to repair that and get tuned up and tuned in again, right? Connected again. So what are, let's get practical. What are examples of misattunement? In sex, of course, we're misattuned when we can't seem to find the flow and the chemistry and the synergy and the electricity between us. Our breath is off. You want to go fast. I want to go slow. You want it this way, I want it that way. Uh, I don't want sex, you do, right? There's all kinds of opportunities to misattune sexually with partners, particularly in a long-term marriage. Um, sex can feel easier and better and more electric in short-term relationships when we're falling in love, we're infatuated, we have a one-night stand. There can be, we can be feel really tuned in and it can feel so amazing. And in a long-term relationship, the work is to tune in to each other over many days, hours, so we can sync up and have a uh, fulfilling sexual connection. And remember, sex doesn't have to equate to intercourse. But it means that we tune in to our vibe together and we can flow in a more beautiful way. Other examples of, say, misattunement. Have you ever been to a beach or a golf course or hiking and someone nearby is playing music on their Bluetooth speaker really loud as if they're the only person in the room. They're just like jamming away, oblivious to the impact on other people. That is a misattuned person. When you ever, if you've ever danced with someone 
and you feel like they're stepping on your toes or you're stepping on their toes a lot and it's really clunky and awkward, that's a misattuned, two misattuned dancers, right? Someone is in their head scared to get it right. Like this is a teenage boy, say, at a prom who's trying to dance with a woman, a young girl, and he's stepping on her toes and he's in his head because he's nervous and he's scared and it's just awkward. The whole thing feels and looks awkward. That's misattunement, right? Versus uh, tango dancers who are super tuned in and plugged in in like a tango competition that is just like, holy shit. Two people are just on fire in terms of the their chemistry and their flow. They're very tuned in, right? Someone, if you've ever had coffee with someone or a beer with someone and they're talking at you the whole time and you can't get a word in edgewise, and it feels like you're just listening, That's mis that person is misattuned to you. And then you feel like you've got to be polite and just nod your head. And even though you're spacing out and you're somewhere else and you can't wait to look at your phone, that the talker, talkers in general are often misattuned. Uh, they lose their audience and they don't know it and they don't see it. Let's say, this is a ridiculous example, but let's say you're at a celebration of life or a funeral and someone is yelling, right? Or, or laughing and the tone and the mood is extremely somber and solemn. That's sort of a misattunement in, in the vibe of the space. Uh, this is another classic relationship example of misattunement. Woman is struggling, she's emotional, guy comes in and tries to fix it, problem solve, right? Give advice. That's a misattunement. The guy is misattuned to her. She's wanting emotional support, validation, empathy. He comes in with advice and fixing. A classic Zoom meeting is one person's talking uh, or three people come in at the same time with ideas and they keep talking over each other and they're actually not listening. Like you hear this about like Italian families, right? From back East, it's like they're, they're, everybody's talking over each other at the dinner table. There's a lot of misattuned people. Uh, examples of attunement then are, again, sexually when we're in a flow and we have chemistry, we wanna tune in to the other person's body, their vibe, their breath, and we wanna tune into ourselves. And when we meet somewhere in the middle, there's an incredibly attuned, beautiful sexual connection and chemistry that is, I think, hopefully most of us experience this, it's just really beautiful. Breathing together during intercourse or foreplay and just like sinking up your breath, if you've ever tried this with another person, and it can be in a non-sexual experience, breathing together, like in holotropic breath work, for example, is another powerful attunement exercise. When you meet a friend for coffee and it's a back and forth, you know, I share about myself, you share about yourself, you reflect back me, I reflect back you. We have a nice back and forth. That's a pretty attuned conversation. When you walk into a library or a super quiet space, you get that like being loud and obnoxious is not really welcome. And so your vibe, you change your vibe to meet the environment, right? That's tuning in. If you walk, like in high school, you might have had a kid who, a uh, misattuned kid, uh, sometimes a kid, maybe he's neurodivergent, maybe not. He comes into a social context where there's a vibe going on in a group of three, let's say, and the fourth kid comes in in a really misattuned way and blurts out a joke or blurts out something and talks over everybody. And the three kids are like, what is this kid doing? That's again, a misattuned kid to the three other kids. So attunement would be that kid comes in, sits quietly at the edge of the three. Hey guys, yeah, just just here, just showing up. Hey, how y'all doing? I'm just, keep talking, I'm, I'm just, I'm here listening. Or they don't say anything, they just kind of walk up silently and hang out and then they listen and they tune into what the conversation is about, what the content about is about, what the vibe is about. And then they might find a way to enter the conversation or not, but that's tuning in. Laughing together, rowing together, like rowing, right? And paddling in a canoe together. We're like whew, cruising through a river and we're really plugged into the, the, the rhythm of paddling together. Again, dancing, playing a sport with another person where there's just a flow or a group of people and you're tuned into the, the team, a band when you're jamming, right? That's a clear attunement. So these are examples, I think, hopefully practical examples of misattunement and attunement. And your job in relationships, that especially ones that matter, is to tune in, right? Tune in and get plugged in or attuned with the other person, because I think you'll find that the vibe is way more fulfilling and meaningful. And if you're unclear on how to do that, you 
start to, you become a observer of people and spaces and you see if you can feel into, sense into, read into the vibe and plug into that. And one way we can start is, you know, that way is coming into a group setting or an individual setting or one-on-one setting and, um, and do that and practice speaking and listening in a way that's really receptive and honoring the other person. Um, remember, we have to keep track of ourselves. We want to keep noticing, gosh, I feel kind of anxious here. And I'm going to plug into this environment and see what happens. Or, wow, I feel really relaxed here and safe and I want to connect with you. Uh, we can even say that out loud to a close friend. Something else that's really good, any kind of mindfulness meditation practice is great to tune in to yourself and other people. Um, tuning into ourselves first, we notice our breath, our body, sensations, emotions, things like that as we just sit quietly with ourselves. Tuning in to ourselves, right? When you're disconnected from yourself and you're in your head and you're stressed out about life and overwhelmed, harder to tune into like your deeper essence, but you can tune into the fact that you're like, man, I'm really misattuned. I'm really disconnected from myself and having a fucking hard day. That's okay. Um, but the practice is to keep dropping in to you. All right. Okay. Leave a comment. If this was helpful, subscribe to my channel, please share it with a friend and really notice your interactions with people and how attuned or misattuned they are. And notice that when other people you feel like are misattuned, like that guy that's playing his Bluetooth speaker in a quiet place in front of a lot of people, just how inconsiderate that can feel. All right. See you in the next video.